Hey kiddies, it's Triple Future Tuesday once again, and this week we asked the question, wait, is this a sci-fi movie? Science. That's right, this is, uh, this Triple Feature are three movies that present as, you know, dramas, thrillers, or uh, and or, you know, romantical dramas, and then turn out to have a twist that, you know, isn't really telegraphed at all, but uh, somehow explains everything, you know, because why not? So, of course, uh, spoilers for all of the movies we're going to talk about today, but most of them are, you know, between 10 and 15 years old, so I, I, you've had your chance. This triple feature is going to go in order of drastic tonal change and the varying degrees of subtlety of it. So our menu is going to include The Forgotten, Vanilla Sky, and Melancholia. I liked The Forgotten. Uh, it did not do well in theaters. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes has something like has it's something like 30 percent or so, but I thought it was a pretty good movie. It stars uh, Julianne Moore as uh, Telly, who has recently lost her son. Uh, her son was uh, killed in a tragic uh, bus or plane accident with a, a whole bunch of other kids that were on a trip, and she's having a lot of trouble dealing with it, and so she's going to psychiatrist Gary Sinise, who, uh, with her husband, eventually reveal that they never had a son. There was never an accident, and, uh, you know, it's all been this uh, crazy thing inside of her head. And so, at first, the movie looks like it's going to be one of those, oh, this person is crazy, so they're just going to have to, you know, come to grips with their own crazy. But Julianne Moore is very insistent, and she won't let it go, and so she keeps fighting, and eventually it is revealed that yes, she did have a kid. And there are forces covering up the fact that she had a kid. And they are gradually revealed. One of the things I like about the movie is that it does a, uh, not necessarily slow reveal, but it does it in stages where it's like at the, at the end of each act, something even cr something crazy is revealed about what's actually going on. And so in the beginning, it seems like this strange uh, government conspiracy to act like uh, these kids never died on uh, this plane accident or bus accident, I forget. So she's being hounded by government agents, which seems excessive in and of itself, but then once like she finally gets away from them at the end of the first act, she's looking up and there's a lot of weird cloud things happening, like stuff being obscured by clouds that also seem to be moving against the wind, which is weird. And then, uh, so she uh, is able to convince a fellow parent who lost a child, Dominic West, that he had a kid and that his kid died in the same way, or on the same trip. Together, they team up and start finding out more and more information until they find that it is actually, it is a government conspiracy that is working with aliens. And uh, the aliens are running an experiment on, uh, on motherhood, the bond between a mother and a child, and can that be severed? And so that's why they're systematically taking away uh, the kids and then the memories of the kids and all the evidence that the kids existed. But Julianne Moore is pretty great. Uh, I, I mean, she, Julianne Moore is always great, but she brings so much strength to this character. And I just, I'm a sucker for family stuff winning out in the end and the bond between the mother and the child actually saving the day to, uh, like in the face of you know if not out and out evil but callously scientific aliens uh in this film play uh, represented by linus roche uh bruce wayne's dad and uh one of the uh more recent, or, or the last assistant district attorney on Law and Order, who Linus Rush is always a good time. You never really, you don't really see him in as many things anymore. You need to find out what he's up to. But he's pretty great as uh, the agent who is uh, running the whole experiment. And credit where credit's due. It's you know for having such a far out premise, it doesn't really go too nutty with it. But when it does, it is very effective effective because the world is presented so uh, realistically so when um people are getting ri uh, when the aliens are pulling people out 
of buildings, it's j very jarring. And then there's a really great bit at the end where Linus Roach is, you know, it's his ass if this, ex if this experiment fails. And so he starts yelling at Julian more and letting the alien in him be revealed. And in the theater, it was, uh, because it was so different and unexpected, it was uh, pretty just, ew, I just shrunk back in my seat. It was a really good time. So, I mean, you, there, it, it's not a great movie, but you could, there are worse ways to spend an afternoon. Next up, we have Cameron Crowe's Vanilla Sky, the remake of the Spanish film Abre los Ojos. This presents as a drama, a drama about a spoiled rich man played by Tom Cruise. And uh, he is a, he inherited a publishing empire that he's sort of not interested in. He, he just wants to, you know, be a rich guy in New York and be awesome and have cool parties and have sex with all the prettiest women, including Cameron Diaz and Penelope Cruz. And, um, when his life goes horribly wrong and, uh, one of his ex-lover tries to commit suicide and take him with her in a car accident, he becomes disfigured and, uh, can't really deal with that. Again, it presents itself as a drama, so it's all going to be about, you know, coming to grips with your disfigurement and finding new uh, life and everything. But then everything miraculously starts going even better for him. Like, uh, the girl, his new girl takes him back, uh, the heretofore unfixable thing about his face is fixable, and everything's wonderful, but, you know, he uh, goes nuts and kills the girl that he loves, even though he insists that it wasn't her, that it, she, she was replaced, or she was replaced with somebody else and then he went a little nuts and so much like the forgotten uh a lot of this is presented as oh you're just crazy but no it turns out he's not crazy he's dead but not uh jacob's ladder type of dead sorry spoiler for that but again that movie's like 30 years old you had your chance and david signed up to be cryonically frozen and uh, committed suicide, and so in the hopes that like one day medical science would be able to fix his face, <laughs> and uh, he opted in his chronic while being chronically frozen to be in a lucid dream that you know something to while away the decades <laughs> as he lays in a freezer, and uh, unfortunately his dream got a little, the technology was uh, not perfected at the time he went in, so it got a little wonky, and so people kept changing faces, and that's why he went nuts and killed people, but it turns out none of them exist anyway because they're all in his head, and uh, luckily they can fix the, uh, fix the problem now if he so chooses, or he can wake up and, you know, have his face fixed because it's been 150 years and um this is all explained in the last 20 minutes by the english actor noah taylor with all of the drama and intrigue of a tech support dude who that is his name his character name is tech support just explaining oh yeah and this is why this and this is why this and this is why this and it's I mean, the shame of it is, up until that point, it's been a, it, it had been a very uh, visually appealing movie. Cameron, Cameron Crowe did a lot of good stuff with the look of the film, and, you know, you can sort of tell when the dream starts. Uh, things just look different, uh, but not, like, so unrealistic that you, that, you know, you wouldn't be able to just go along with it. But then all of a sudden, ha-ha, sci-fi. And, uh... I mean, I guess it works. I guess it's fine. It's not a bad movie, but it's just... It doesn't wear well when the whole thing is just the fantasy of a rich guy who, except for the horrible accident that, you know, he didn't necessarily cause cause, but could have avoided. It just... The, the, there's indulgence, and then there's the life of David Ames. That's Tom Cruise's character. Uh, I will say, though, Kurt Russell is amazing in this film. He plays a psych uh, David Ames' psychiatrist and pseudo-father figure. Kurt brings it. He's just, uh, he's just so paternal and loving, even though, you know, he's a court-appointed shrink trying to determine if David Ames did murder people or is, if he's just crazy. And when the whole truth of the thing is being revealed and he's just he's a fictional character he does not exist he uh is the one trying to t tell david that all this is real that he's not created that like it's not this lucid dream thing and he has just he brings all this emotion and passion into arguing that i'm real and it's just dude fucking kurt russell man he's just awesome all the time you know even in if the movie around him is not the best thing 
Finally, we have Melancholia, which is a movie split into two halves. The, the movie is even less subtle in terms of the addition of the sci-fi element, because the first half of the movie is a uh, Kirsten Dunst's wedding to uh, Alexander Skarsgård, and how much of a disaster that is, because everybody is bipolar and everybody hates everybody. It's amazing. It's like a, it's like an hour and change the the first half, and everybody is miserable on this really really happy day, and everybody is sniping and passive aggressively going after each other, and it's just a delight. And then there's the second half of the movie where it's, it's literally like part one is Justine, that's Kirsten Dunst and her wedding and how horribly that goes, and then part two is Claire, played uh, by Charlotte Gainsbourg as uh, Kirsten Dunst's sister. And that is all about this rogue planet, Melancholia, could possibly be on a collision course with the planet Earth. And it is a completely crazy sci-fi story in terms of, I mean, it's a planet that, you know, has been hidden, is in the orbit of Earth and everything else in some peculiar fashion, and probably like scientists say oh it's it's gonna be close it's gonna be close but it's not gonna hit us and on uh that first big night it's really beautiful you know seeing the melancholia planet you know get closer and everything and everything's fine but then it comes back and it destroys the planet earth yeah and it's uh like because it's like part one and part two the one have, well, the, the two parts inform each other, but they don't really have much to do with each other because uh, it's just it's the same characters, but it's been some time since the wedding, and uh, Kirsten Dunst's depression has gotten worse, and everybody else is having their depression issues, and also, hey, there's this crazy planet that might kill us, so that's stressing everybody out. Uh, while you're watching the first part, you would have there's no hint about any of it. There's like uh, the closest thing is there's one moment at the very end of the of uh, part one where uh, a planet is being obscured by melancholia, and they make reference to that and that's about it for the whole second half of the movie it's just a sci-fi movie with uh really horrifying elements and the the good type of sci-fi that uses a far out premise to uh put our characters in odd situations and see how they would react which is you know what all stories are supposed to be it's just sci-fi makes it even crazier and so you can have even crazier reaction then the planet gets crushed it's really really horrifying because you are just there you are sitting there with the people and there is nothing that can be done because while it's a sci-fi movie in that sense, uh, it's not really a sci-fi movie in the sense that we have any technology to deal with that. Which is why I like all these three movies together. There's, uh, you know, there's some far out element, but the world is still our world. So it's, you know, how do you deal with it with the tools that you or I would have right now? And uh, if you need pointers on that, you should watch these movies. Melancholia, to deal with the end of the planet Earth. Vanilla Sky, to deal with, you know, you being a jerk and uh, not being able to deal with your life. And The Forgotten, if somebody tries to steal your kid, you know, as part of an experiment to see if the psychic bonds of motherhood can be severed. They can. Just don't try. They proved it in this movie, so it's over. Just move on. There are other things to look at. So, yeah, watch those, and I'll see you guys later.